Hello everyone, my name's Emily and today we are going to be reviewing Allie Hazelwood's Not In Love, her most recent debut. As someone who has read, I think, all of Allie Hazelwood's books, I think. We're gonna see if this book fit her typical formula she's developed. She has been kind of branching out a little bit more with different styles of writing with her two, I think, more recent books, Bride and Check-In Mate, but this one kind of has a little bit of a darker tone, so we're gonna talk more about it. So, like most of my other book reviews, we're gonna keep the first part spoiler-free, and then we'll move into the spoilers where we'll talk about plot, notable quotes, the characters, and last but not least, the book cover. Before we get into all of this, I just wanna throw a couple of disclaimers out. The biggest trigger warnings are probably gonna be food insecurity and child neglect. I'll also list if there are any others here, but those are the two that come to my mind, so if those are triggers, please protect your peace. And then the other disclaimer is just this review will contain dramatic reactions, very strong opinions, and once we get to the spoiler part, many spoilers. So let's get all those on the table and then let's get into it. So Not In Love follows Rue and Eli who are kind of this forbidden lovers type situation. Rue is a chemical engineer who works for a biofuel company and Eli is part of this company that's trying to buy out Klein, the company that Rue works for. And they have this attraction together that they're kind of like trying to keep under wraps because they're kind of they're on opposite sides of this weird power dynamic between their companies but they have this attraction to each other the book kind of explores how they navigate that while being in that like weird situation at work from a pacing standpoint this book is i would say quite quickly paced i never got bored I really enjoyed the exploration we did of both of their characters. You find out, based off trigger warnings, there are some deeper things to be thinking about. There's a more complex situation going on behind both of their characters and kind of why they do what they do, which I thought was really well written. As a dietitian, especially when it comes to food insecurity, this isn't something that like people normally talk about it all. So it was very refreshing to see it being discussed in a book and kind of how that affects your relationship with food and who you are in general. So claps for Ali Hazelwood on that. The romance was very exciting to me. I felt it, it kind of followed the similar formula of like a strong, woman in STEM, but I felt like there were some differences with how Rue was as a, as a character compared to Allie Hazelwood's other characters, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about in my spoiler section, which I thought was really refreshing and a great take. I thought the romance developed at a very appropriate, appropriate pace. It felt very realistic. I feel like sometimes some of her romances, I'm kind of like, I mean, I'm still enjoying them, but it's kind of like, oh, I don't know about that. But this was, I felt like some of it felt a little bit more real. From a spoiler-free standpoint, this might be my favorite book of Allie Hazelwood so far, which honestly might be a little surprising to me, but I think it was honestly how she approached these darker topics and how she kind of shed light around them and how they shape who we are but talked about it in a way that was i could tell she did her research on it which is good i don't like when people i don't like when authors throw in nuanced topics just for the sake of trying to be like more inclusive or whatever so let's get into the spoilers first off we're going to start with the plot and then we'll go into the quotes if you don't want to be spoiled, save this video now, come back later, and we can resume our wrap. But hi, if you want to be spoiled, let's get into it. From a plot standpoint, I enjoyed the plot a lot. This like dramatic, <laughs> the dramatic forbidden love, I was eating up so much. I also loved how like all the coworkers looking knew they were seeing each other, even though they were trying to keep it secret. Like 
everyone knew. I also thought it was really interesting how they were set up to like spy on each other for their bosses kind of, which was funny to me. And then I honestly thought that was gonna be a conflict that would come out, but turns out they were both kind of spying on each other. So it didn't really matter. I thought it was really refreshing that from a plot standpoint, maybe this even goes to characters that Rue wasn't this like super independent stand up for herself stem feminist like she was very shy very awkward socially awkward kind of wanted to just like go with the flow and i thought that representation was really important because not like the stem field is cutthroat but there are also people who aren't as confrontational and that's okay i will note one thing the whole revenge plot kind of was confusing to me like i, I think it was 10 years in the making and at first i was like this is is this excessive for like Hark and Minami and Saul? I was like, what is the fourth guy's name? And Eli to like be plotting against Florence for 10 years. But then I'm like, if you were in your PhD program and because of someone stole all of your work and it got you kicked out and you never became doctors because of that, I would probably be pissed too. And you know what, I'm a vengeful person, so. You know what, I can see it, I can see it. But I really enjoyed the romance. I felt like the romance progressed at a good pace where it was kind of like this, like, what are we? Kind of trying to deny this attraction. And I was a little nervous at first because I thought there'd be a weird power dynamic between Eli and Rue, but there wasn't because he was never really her boss when they were like mingling getting to know each other you know but overall i just felt like the plot felt like at least the romance part felt very real and i'm glad there was a lot of discussion about food insecurity and childhood neglect because those are two things that are very sensitive topics but can have a huge effect on someone so I thought Allie Hazelwood handled it very well. From a quick notable quote section, I don't have that many. The first thing I'll note is kind of in the beginning, near the beginning of the book, when they're like figuring out the connection between Rue and Florence, and then Rue's figuring out the connection eventually between Florence and the Harkness squad. But the quote is like, Minami's going through Rue's information, and she's like, there's more, guess where your future wife Rue got her PhD, Minami asked, don't say UT engineering, please. Okay, I won't. And this is when I was like, oh, the dots are slowly connecting. What is this weird connection? And at first, honestly, I was thinking like they were the same age and she just like didn't know them or something. But I think Rue is like seven years younger than them. I don't know, Ellie Hazelwood also likes to do like decent age gaps for whatever reason. But that was just the first one I was like, ooh, we're thinking, what's, what's the connection here? Our next quote, oh, this is where I thought there was gonna be a huge backfire when the Harkness crew is telling Eli to like, they say, we might wanna keep an eye on them, AKA Florence, Tisha, in Rue, see if they know anything. Eli punched the bridge of his nose, let me guess. We means me. They say, you know her already, just saying. I thought this was gonna backfire a lot. I thought that Rue would find out that he was like sent to spy on her and to be the whole like, oh my gosh, you only used me to get, you used me to get close just to get to Florence. But that never really came up at all which was interesting to me the next section i want to talk about strong food insecurity trigger warning i just want to show the screenshot of how i thought how i am so glad as a dietitian like food insecurity is not talked about at all but the fact ailey hazelwood kind of talked about how with the history of food insecurity how that affects rue's relationship with food because when you don't know if you're going to have a consistent food supply or like when your next meal is gonna be, that Fs you up quite a bit. Like it can cause people to binge a lot more when they have access to food. It can cause them to starve themselves to try to make the food last because they don't know when they'll eat next. 
I just thought this was like really a really good depiction and it was really refreshing to see this talked about in a fictional book because I don't know if I really ever have, especially in a romance book, for sure have not seen that. Okay, this is a quote I wanted to bring up because Florence and Rue are talking and like they're kind of talking about like, oh Rue, you should spy, spy on Eli. And then Florence makes this quote and I just have one little comment about it. She goes, Eli and his friends are Harkness and you know what Harkness is doing to Klein. I simply think that anyone who feels free to take what's others without consent in one context might just be willing to do the same in another. The wording of this and like as we find out like Florence was incredibly manipulative but the wording of this like about how she's implying Eli taking Klein without Florence's consent and Harkness taking it without their consent like and directly implying it about I read this as like a relationship and like sexual things I felt was incredibly manipulative and we should not be throwing stuff like that around that's like a very serious accusation Florence anyway let's move on next quote oh this is just when the next part where I was like when Rue is in Eli's car and she finds the claims against Klein where Florence was testifying and kind of they were like trying to figure out what was going on a little bit more when at UT and what was going on with that research but just finding the proceeding the questionnaire and everything I was like <gasps> I like honestly didn't think it was I was a little nervous that honestly like Florence was gonna steal <laughs> Rue's research like not even sell it I thought she was just gonna steal it and then it came out and then I thought like maybe they were I thought they were like gonna be colleagues on the same level I didn't realize she was their like mentor so that was crazy to me our next quote is when Vincent Rue's brother is like at her apartment keeps harassing her to sell their family's home, Rue's last connection to her dad. And he's like being all nice. And then Rue responds and he goes, I knew you were in there, Vince's voice harsh and open up. No, I'm not gonna let you in my apartment when you're being aggressive. I'll fucking give you aggressive. The door shook within his frame. I leaped back, what the hell? Another heavy thud, Vince was kicking my door. Vince, you need to stop. Not until you let me in. He punctured the words with another heavy blow. And literally what entered my mind was audio. I'm about to beat this bitch. I remember thinking, I'm about to beat this bitch up. Me and Vincent, let's, let's show down. It's, it's on site with him. Okay, our next quote. This is when Rue is going to seek out Hark because she wants to hear his side about what happened with Florence and Eli's upset because she's not going to him, but Rue is doing it because she's like, if it's Hark, I can pretend he's just being like over exaggerating, but with you, I, I know you're being truthful with me. And this one little excerpt made me a little bit upset. So let's start from the beginning. Her, Rue. Her eyes widened in surprise when she noticed him. He could sense it between them like a physical object, the awareness of this ever deepening connection between them. But Rue instantly lowered her gaze as if to sweep it, sweep him away. Have you told her how you feel? Out of the blue, Eli felt anger, abrupt, intense, bottomless anger, equally directed at Rue and himself. Her presence in his life and his head was uninvited. The power she held over him, he had never meant to yield it which meant that she must have taken it without his permission, robbed him of it. And after everything that had happened between them last night, she chosen to go not to him, but to heart. That was the degree of trust that she afforded him. La la la. All she, he could feel was resentment. He wanted her so much. Every time he saw her, just talking about how much he wants her. And to this point, like Eli has been very patient. He's been very respectful. And I like kind of feel for his anger because like sure they like show these really deep moments but also I feel like Rue kind of sent the bar quite early on 
what to expect and she's very clearly like not in touch with her emotions or very good at reflecting so when he was angry about it and that like he felt betrayed i was like he eventually like the next page or two he like he was like oh my gosh i'm i'm overreacting but at first i was like dude chill she explained herself Relax. okay next quote is when Brew confronts Florence and she's and Flor and this is like this is honestly one of my favorite parts of the book because of how this is handled and Florence goes no grad students gets credit they're talking about like Florence taking well, basically stealing the signs from the Harkness crew no grad students get credit for the kind of ideas they help refine their contributions for grunt work was I supposed to share the patent with two men just because they'd run a couple of assays for me please I knew they'd be fine Eli hadn't been though, nor Hark I suspected. What about Minami? See that? Florence and Adsley. That really does hurt in hindsight. I feel horrible for not including her in the pattern, but I didn't have any other choice. You know how hard it is for women in our field. I was in a terrible situation. Like, Minami's a woman too, and a more junior academic. And that's not Florence. Having it hard doesn't give us a pass to cheat other people out of their work, especially not to screw over people who have it harder. And I felt like this was what made or like this is one of the components that made not in love one of my favorite Allie hazelwood books if not my favorite so far because typically her antagonists have been men and for anyone who's in the stem field knows about the stem field it's very male dominated and there's a lot of misogyny involved and kind of having like a man in power being the antagonist was just very on brand but the fact that in this book, she chose to, to make the antagonist a woman who tried to justify it by whatever like adversity she faced. She like thought it, she justified screwing over other people. And this was so interesting to me because like it is harder for women in STEM fields. And like sometimes like saying like, oh, the men will be OK. Like that's a men do have it they have a higher chance of being successful just for being a man because one, they get paid more. <laughs> that eight, that wage gap still exists. Two, there's just so much deep rooted misogyny, especially in engineering that it's like, screw them. But like, I don't know, the like screw over Minami part, I was like, ooh girl, girl, that was not good. But also like you could have shared credit Grad students do get a lot of the grunt work, but like, it's one of those things like, just because you had it hard doesn't make mean that you should make it worse for others. Or like, it's one of those things where like, don't you want it to be easier for other people? Like, just because you, it was hard for you doesn't mean that it should be hard for everyone else. Like we should be progressing as a society and it should not be like this for everyone. It should be getting easier. So we can have more people in these positions. Anyway, my last quote, <laughs> Minami and Rue are talking and Minami's talking about her baby and Minami goes, we all have our baggage and Nila is not the type to hold anyone's against them. Although on my end, it would be better if it didn't work out between you two. I blanked it would. I love the name Rue, big Hunger Games fan here. If it's girl and she, if she's a girl and she is a girl, I'm seriously considering it. And honestly, I was thinking this the whole time. Every time I read it, I would either hear Rue? When was this? Rue? Listen, let's just get into the car, okay? When was this? Or I'd be thinking of Hunger Games Rue. So Allie Hazelwood's living my head. I think also Allie Hazelwood is quite active online because there are a lot of phrases in here that I was like, that's a very niche online reference. But anyway, let's get to the characters. We'll get to the book cover and the final thoughts. So characters, I really liked Rue. I kind of talked about how I liked she was a little bit of a different representation of this Steminist because she was a little bit more socially awkward, trying to kind of always read what other people are feeling and like trying to make herself a little bit more aloof and distant so they wouldn't realize how awkward she was. I really enjoyed her character development and I just want Rue to be happy. Eli was so cute. I think his only flaw was he 
still was in contact with his ex but like you know what he's a grown adult they're civil with each other rue likes mackenzie she's the chef maybe i'm just a little bit more of a jealous person and rue's better than me because the amount of times he brought her up i was like but that's just me florence i felt like was such an interesting and complicated character because she's using her role as a woman in stem to manipulate and abuse others which like I think it's so interesting and complicated and I think there is so much room for improvement still, especially for female engineers, women in STEM, but it's such an interesting reflection on like how we use the power we're given and whatnot. Tisha, 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 love her. She was a fun supportive side character. I don't really have much negative to say about her. I didn't really have any strong feelings either. Minami I liked a lot. She's probably my favorite of the Harkness crew. And she just like gets it. Wow. The whole fact that she like got screwed over but still got her PhD and like literally works with her ex and her husband. That's a messy story right there, but I love her a lot. Hark, he was fine. Honestly, I thought he was like 50, 60 years old, but then he's the same age as Eli. And apparently he's like 15 years older than Maya, who's 23, which make him like 38. But this whole time I was matching this very old man and I'm like, wait, him and Eli were like in the same cohort. But Hark, when I hear that, I'm like 65 year old man. Sorry, my guy. Also, all I he kind of gave off Nepo baby energy and he was very rude when he was drunk. So honestly, I didn't love him all that much. Soul was nice. Don't know much about him besides he's married to Minami, so maybe I should just call him Minami's husband. That's who he really is. I liked Maya a lot. I also liked that she was 23 years old and they didn't make her like really, or Ali didn't make her really young because I thought the relationship dynamic between her and Eli was so interesting. Loved her. Vincent can suck my lean. He was really getting on my nerves and I know he has childhood trauma and it's very terrible and he might have felt abandoned by rue but at this grown age abusing your sister is not gonna help anything get it together man get it together last thing to know about characters i thought rue was a mid-sized girly the way that ali described her as like having very round hips and a round belly and very full rests i was like this is a mid-sized girly at least yes let's get some body representation but then the cover this is very much not a mid-sized girly so i'm getting mixed signals and i'm gonna pretend she's mid-sized because i like that better i like that representation better we need more body sizes in literature so that's what i'm gonna think the book cover it's getting better. I want to buy Ellie Hazelwood's book so much. I just can't get over the art. I don't know what it is about the art or the characters, but I don't enjoy it. I don't think it's, I like my cute little aesthetic characters. I, I don't know. I don't know, I don't love it. Last final thoughts. I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a refreshing change from Ellie Hazelwood's books because it's still following her STEM feminist formula, but it's diving a little bit deeper into these darker topics that I don't really see conversation about. Like even in my field, there's such a lack of discussion around food insecurity. So it's nice to see representation in fictional books, especially romance. It's crazy how to bring that in. I would say this is my favorite. Did I say that already? <laughs> can I emphasize, can I emphasize enough? This is probably my favorite and I thought it was a really fun read. I gave it five stars. Go follow me on Goodreads and Storygraph because I post all my reviews there first before they hit YouTube, but this was fun. I'm excited for Went. I think that's coming out in 2025, but till then, make sure you like this video. It helps me a lot. Comment below what your thoughts were on this book. If you liked it, disliked it, comment below what other books you would like me to review or what you're looking forward to reading. 
And then, oh, also comment below if you thought she was mid-sized, because I thought she was, but I'm confused by this cover. And then make sure if you liked this video, you want to see more book reviews from me, make sure you subscribe and turn on bell notifications so you don't miss any new videos from yours truly. I think that is all. Oh my gosh, guys. Also, I reorganized my bookshelf. When I went in that book shopping spree, if you saw on Instagram a couple weeks ago, I was like, I have to redo my entire bookshelf. So I'm so proud of it. Let me know if you want a tour because I think it looks so good. Hold on, let me just... Look how... Okay, if it gets, if it'll focus. But it's so much... I'm so proud of it. I put too much time and thought into this. Actually, that's a lie. Life is short. Do things you enjoy. Reorganize your bookshelf. All right, bye.